Welcome to Mainland Television Regional News. I'm Graham O'Brien and today's news, Green's AGM lasts for Norman leadership, World of Wearables rolls out the goods and Rescue Service Fundraiser draws a good crowd. Nelson Green's party AGM on Monday night was attended by 60 plus party faithful who went along to show their support. Co-leader Russell Norman stayed on to give a presentation on climate change and what the Greens feel are the solutions. And with only six weeks to go until he stands down from the leadership, he had some candid comments for those who attended. Instead of paying $8 billion a year for imported oil, we could actually source our transport energy in New Zealand um, through renewable electricity. We also have, you know, the way the renewable electricity system works is often at night time or whatever, you get wind blowing, you've got geothermal units which can never be turned off, they go all the time. Um, what do you do with all that power? And one place you can put that power is into the, the batteries of electric vehicles. I caught up with Russell after the presentation. Russell, thanks very much for just sparing a couple of minutes for us. I know it's been a long night for you. Six weeks left as co-leader. What's the plans here? You got a bit of a holiday coming up? Or what, what, do you, what have you got? Uh, well, it's just um, the, watching the co-leader contest for the other four and um, I'm pleased I'm not having to do that. Uh, and then, you know, helping out whoever wins that contest, just helping them through the transition. Sure, sure yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. You've um, got any hints for where to put the money? Uh, no, 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 I'm not getting engaged in it. <laughs> nice one. Um, the Green Party in Nelson um, it used to be one of the strongholds. We don't, have a, we don't actually have an office in here anymore, which is a real shame. Is there any plans to sort of build up maybe the more provincial, or the, the cities and the provincial districts again? Well, what we decided was we needed a strong campaigning kind of ability um, and to campaign nationally. And so we've got the, basically we've got the resources so we can put a campaign right across the country. If we tried to, basically we came to the conclusion if we tried to put offices everywhere, um, it would basically drag, to, to take too much money, we just didn't have it. Um, so we thought it would be better to actually create a national campaigning ability and spread that out across the country. Excellent. Hey, thanks very much and all the best for the future. My pleasure. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Candidates standing for the male side of the co-leadership of the Greens are Kevin Haig, Gareth Hughes, James Shaw and Veron Tava. If you wish to watch Russell Norman's full climate change presentation, it will be available on our website and Mainland Television Facebook page later this week. People of Stoke may be stoked to find out that theirs is Nelson's fastest growing suburb. Nelson City Council has made provisions for continued development of Stoke as part of its 10-year plan. Over the next 30 years, it's estimated that Stoke will become home to three quarters of Nelson's population growth and half its new housing. And Council says it has recognised a need for appropriate facilities and service to support this growth forecast. The plan provides for a new facility at Green Meadows Reserve with 5.6 million set aside to build the facility. Some further Stoke projects that have been included in the long-term plan include discussions with the community on the future of Stoke Hall and how it can best fit with the new Green Meadows facility, consultation planning and physical works for a youth park, an extension to the library and further improvements to parking and transport issues. This is just a small taste of some spending that Council has in the LTP. We sent our team out to ask people in Nelson what they knew of the plan and whether they were going to submit on the consultation document before Tuesday next week. The council long-term plan mentions the future of Stoke Hall and how it can fit with the new plan Green Meadows facility, plus physical works for youth park, extension for the library and further improvements to parking and transport issues. Have the long-term plan got it right for the Stoke area? Yes, I certainly do. Yes, I think it's, uh, it'll be great to have the community centre at Stoke and um, it's, you know, sort of up and going, Stoke's going up and going and I think anything that they're going to do for Stoke will be great. I think they're on the right track. Yeah. I'd like to see many of those things put in place. I think so because we need a lot of places like that here. I think um, it can go ahead, Stoke can go ahead. There's the people here to do it and um, they're all a good bunch. I think they're not doing too bad uh, from what I've seen of what they've done and uh, what you're talking about. Um, you could do a lot more but that depends on money and uh, they don't do a bad job with the old folks um, with their uh, reduction on their, their uh, rates and things for those that are on a fixed income. 
OK, so I think that's not bad going so far. Well, it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, stoat certainly needs something um, that's growing all the time, and um, yeah, the more it comes into stoat, the better. I've been here for many years, and it's about time something happened here. Yeah, yeah I believe so, except for the youth park. Yeah, not interested in having that in stoke. There's enough trouble with youth without encouraging that. Yeah. Do you think the youth park could help with stopping those uh, troubles? Um, no, I don't believe so because Nelson, I mean, Stoke has a high, uh, a lot of elderly people living here. And I think that a lot of elderly would be too frightened to go anywhere near it or past it here. Yeah. What else could they do for the area? Oh, I think the parking is a huge issue. Parking would be good, yeah. I think they've probably got it all down pat for what they want to do. Yes, yeah. Yeah, they've got the Saxons field there and that's brilliant. And um, No, I think they're doing OK. We've got uh, our roading, which the, uh, has built up again uh, between here and uh, going through town. They're going to have to look at that. They're going to have to look seriously on how to handle that and that's going to be very expensive. And they're probably well aware of that and it would be costs that would be uh, a worry to them, but with the build-up in traffic, you're going to find that that affects uh, businesses. It affects people going to and from Richmond to town or whatever. So, yes, they've got a few things to do yet. A bit more security for the elderly around here, especially with the young ones, because they're sort of going a bit right. So maybe, yeah, a youth centre or something like that would be good for them to, to have something to do instead of going around and causing a little bit of havoc I've heard about. So yeah, that's about it really. And I think that one of the best things that the council has ever done was the Saxton Field. Excellent, excellent project. Maybe more for the kids. I see a lot of kids um, just sort of roaming around the streets, maybe some skateboard park or, or, or something like that, just, just to keep them you know, in the one area and out of trouble. Yeah. The Rescue Helicopter Annual Open Day saw a series of exciting events taking place for all of those attending on the weekend. A host of emergency rescue displays had been put on the menu and the day's planned events showed spectators the other side of the rescue coin to help bring an awareness of each group's purpose. There were demonstrations on the day by the local rescue services involving the airport's fire service, St John Ambulance, Coast Guard and Civil Defence, as well as a rescue helicopter. Although the Nelson Marlborough Rescue Helicopter Trust gets the main bulk of the funding grants through the Canterbury Trust, it is never enough to cover the full costs of running what has become an essential and busy service. Last year has seen the busiest year to date for the service, with the start of this year showing no sign of that easing. Funds raised from the open day go back into helping with the operational costs for maintaining crew and the helicopter's rescue service. Saturday saw a no-show for the World of Wearable Arts fundraiser car park sale due to the weather. However, Sunday was a different story with the day turning on good weather, which meant the goods rolled out to the new owners. Raising over 7,600 at the last count towards designer clear prebles, medical treatment and recuperation. And still money continues rolling in. And lastly, our story in yesterday's news on the wood burner issue suffered some technical issues. So we will now bring you that story again in its entirety. Tasman Council has recently announced ultra-low burners are not a priority to approve at this time, while Nelson Council is still dragging its heels with no flexibility or date in sight to approve these new wood burners. Nelson Company J-Line was given approval last February by Environmental Canterbury ECAN, for their European-designed wall therm air gasification fires, and now Envirosolve has just been given approval in March for their Danish-designed bionic fire. I talked with J-Line owner Ross Snedden about this new technology that has been developed to meet the needs of New Zealand communities that aren't available to Nelson due to council regulations. Yeah, very nice. And can you tell us a little bit about um, this ultra-low emission burner that you've, you've just got consent for? What, what's the main bonuses of it? Well, the bonus, the, the sort of thing is the ultra-low emission burner, they call them a double combustion downdraft burner. And what the feature of, the, of, that, of that fire is, 
because the downdraft it goes in automatically and mechanically automatically. There is no electricity or fan required. There is also no manual uh, uh, flap required. It's everything fully done uh, automatically in the fire. And um, the, the, the real thing is it only needs one kilo of wood an hour. Wow. Pine wood, tested with pine, which gets an output of 4.6 kilowatt output and about it hits about 85 square meters. And as an optional thing, it can come on a swivel, which yep. means you can turn that, that fire 360 degrees around. Wow, it's, it's pretty amazing, all right. Um, yeah. yeah, so you're saying that this, these ultra-low emission burners are actually lower, uh, lower uh, uh, emission output than the pellet fires? Well, it, it's about like we could talk about the ultra low emission pellet fire. Some of them are about the same, some a bit above, some a bit below. Yeah. And, and, and now, because in Christchurch, the ultra low emission pellet burners has been allowed into new houses or rebuilt. Yeah. The same in Nelson, Nelson City Council, you're allowed in certain areas, as I, as I understand, in Nelson, are allowed ultra low emission pellet burner, yeah. but not log burners. Yes. Now, the, que the question is here. Just because we now have this ultra low emission log burner, uh, why we can't put the log burner and ultra low emission log burner in your house in, Cri in Nelson? Yeah, that's that's absolutely the same. Uh, the question we've been ans asking um, quite often lately, um, and also, sorry, Renee, just to go off that, you've actually got another um, uh, product as well called the Okia tube. Yeah, we have the Oka tube, and actually, when I started my business in emission technology and energy efficiency about two and a half years ago, I started with Oka tube because I think that's a tool for the tool, the, that the tool for New Zealand because it can be retrofitted on every single chimney in New Zealand, yep. and it could use the particles up to 95 percent. Yeah, that sounds a really good, really good for the existing homes, and um, how have you tried to get that through a consent project process as well? Well, we, we, we have done a lot of work with the, with the West Coast Council with reason. We have done some tests in Nelson, which are very, very, very promising. Yep. And, but these guys now have to go through a, through a process as well. And I just got in front of me the new parliamentarian report about the PM 2.5. And then the, they, all these people now take everything on hold now and the funding as well, because they talk about a, a, a goalpost, which is about 20 years down the track. I managed to catch up with a very busy Dr. Rene Hibali, who is currently travelling around the country promoting the bionic fire. Ross, thanks very much for taking a bit of time out of your day to um, tell us a bit more about your product. You've got the Woodburner Past ECAN, the Environmental Canterbury. Must have been a tough call. Can you tell us a bit about that? It was our hardest call ever. Um, I've been developing fires for 35 years and this was the hardest call. Um, to get this through was truly a challenge. Yeah. Um, it's taken us almost 12 months to get it through into a point where we can sell it. Um, ECAN or Canterbury, uh, they've been very, very helpful to us uh, and together basically we managed to get through the rules, through the resource consents, everything they needed, they made it easy, when I say easy, they helped us out going through there and we basically worked in conjunction with each other. Sure, that's great, it's great to hear government departments are helping us get warmer. Um, so you can now put these fires into existing and new builds, is that correct? Absolutely, in, in, in Canterbury, yes, they can go anywhere from Christchurch down to Timaru and existing or new builds, yes. I'll be happy to hear that down there, it's pretty cold. And can you tell us a little bit more about why is this one so good and what can it do for us? Sure, this, this model is designed and manufactured uh, from a German company but based in Northern Italy. Um, we imported it because we felt it had the best features for us. Uh, we had to redesign it a little bit to pass the CM1 result and we've done that over that long period of time but now it's working well. The dry model puts out 14 kilowatts of air into your room or your house and you can do that via ducting kits, you can spread it right around your house. Uh, we have other models on, on their way as well for next year to follow it up. That's great. Um, we know it's a little bit expensive. Uh, is there a smaller, more, a smaller models coming or basically is this it? The ones coming up are a fraction smaller, probably 20% smaller than this one, um, and they will be substantially cheaper. Um, so basically watch the spot for that one, but there will be a range of them for next year. That all sounds great and um, we're hoping that we can have them in Nelson and Tasman soon. Well, you all very much are. <laughs> Ross, thanks very much for your time. Cool, thanks very much. Nelson is fast falling behind the times, being unable to change the strict rules they've put on residents. 
So the burning questions are, why is Nelson Council now leaving Nelsonians out in the cold over this issue? And when can Nelson expect some good news like Christchurch, as ECAN has now approved these two ultra-low emission wood burners to be allowed in new and existing buildings? After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacements, scratch removal. If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. Hi everyone, I'm Malcolm Harris from The Facilitators. We now look after sales for mainland TV, radio, sky and online. New Zealand On Air's latest Colmar Brunton survey confirms mainland's large multimedia audience. If you're in business or want to put a message out to everyone in the Nelson Tasman region, plus nationwide on Sky or worldwide online, please give me a call or see our website at www.mainlandtv.nz. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power. Electronics toys. Sound systems, cables and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Hi, I'm John McMillan at the Nelson Power Tool Centre. We have great prices on all the top quality brands of power tool. Tools and equipment at our showroom, 146 Tahunani Drive in Nelson. The Nelson Power Tool Centre, the specialists that stand behind and service what we sell. Discover the Belgrove Tavern just 20 minutes south of Richmond on State Highway 6. A restaurant, functions, weddings, barbecue, a garden bar with lots of room for kids. Come and see us. Motowaka's War World War I commemorations are on from the 21st of April at Motowaka Museum and Muses Cafe. For times and dates, please phone 03-528-7660. Nelson Anzac Day Centennial Dawn Service is on this Saturday 25th of April. At 5.30am a parade will leave Miller's Acre, the Eyesight Car Park, to Trafalgar Park. Access to Trafalgar Park will be via the main entrance or Mai Tai Gate. For any information, please phone Kate on 03 548 0517. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. For more information, you can contact Jan on 546 9057 or 027 4577 955. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow.
supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Hi there, this is Paul Ego from the Two Degrees Comedy Convoy and you are watching Mainland TV. Unless you're on an island out in the sounds, in which case you're probably just watching some rocks and a seagull defecating on a raft. Hi, my name's Ian Mortimer. Mortimer Auto Upholstery is your one-stop shop for all your upholstery needs. We do car and boat interiors, boat canopies, ute tonne covers, canvas and PVC fabrication. Call in and see us in Oxford Mews, 72 Oxford Street, Richmond. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You. 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery we have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Rats, stoats and possums are killing our native birds and reptiles. You can stop this tragedy. The Brook Waimarama Sanctuary is building a pest proof fence which will allow native wildlife to flourish and spread into our lives. Help us preserve our native wildlife. Your support is needed now. You can personally or as a group sponsor a fence post for as little as $100, including the legacy of a personalised plaque. Go to thebrooksanctuary.org or give us a call. And be part of this exciting community project. The Brook Waimarama Sanctuary, returning nature to the Nelson region.